G'day, I'm Drew from Gringo Productions, and today we're looking at how to do Power Windows in DaVinci Resolve. We have our footage here, a couple of plants, a beanie, and some ugliness down here. So there's a link below for my website to download this footage so you can follow along too. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to balance our image and just put a bit of saturation and contrast in it. So let's bring up our scopes. And as you can see, we have a little overexposure here, which is this area here. And we'll be looking at ways how to deal with that a bit later on. Let's bring up our whites. Make sure don't go above this line. And bring those blacks down a little bit. And just give this a really quick balance. And fix those mids up. Alrighty, let's add some saturation in, a little bit of contrast, and let's bring it up just a little bit more. Okay, so we'll call that good for now. So let's make another node, Alt S for a serial node. Now we're going to create four more nodes, but they're all going to be parallel nodes. So Alt P. So for whatever reason you don't want to use shortcut keys, come to Color, Nodes, and then you have all your nodes in here you can select. But Highly recommend learning all the shortcut keys. So Alt P each time. Oh, actually, five more nodes, sorry. So we'll call this one square. Let's bring up this area here to be a little bit more brighter. But the problem is if we bring this up even more, this is gonna blow out even more. So let's use the square node to bring it up. And let's just do it really quick. And just grabbing those corners, expanding them out a little bit. Okay, now we're going to deliberately leave this area here for now. So let's bring up some of those whites. So with our game, we'll bring it up a little bit more. And some of those mids. So Control F brings up our large screen. So as you can see, it's a lot brighter. The problem is we have this really obvious line where we've made the vignette. To make this work better, we can soften our image. So you can either grab this part here and bring it out, or you can do it down here in the softness area. So we're affecting this a little too much, so just bring this down, bring this in and out. And if you don't want to even do the softness, you can have it like that. We've gone from here to here. So that looks pretty good. Control F again, go back to a normal screen. And let's just clean up our nodes by right clicking clean up graph. All right, so let's do the circle window now. So let's move this up a little bit. So I call that circle, which has a capital I there for some reason. And with this one here, let's bring it over to the beanie and just build that circle around the beanie by using your little handles here. You can pull it any way you want. So, around it looks pretty good. Now let's say we want this beanie to be even more saturated. So if we come down here and saturate it, as you can see we're saturating this other area too. So we don't want that. All we want to do is saturate the beanie. So control F, go back to your smaller screen. Right, so instead of doing that, let's preset our saturation. Let's go into our curves. Let's go to the third one, hue versus saturation. And let's find the area of the image we want to affect. So we just want to use yellow, so click on the yellow. Now, the trick with using this is the smaller your selection, the worse your selection will be. So we do this in hue versus hue, it'll be even more obvious. As you can see, we're missing all this stuff here. So if we go back to hue versus saturation and bring this right out, because we know that we're not going to affect anything else because the power window is only around this object here. So we just bring up that saturation 
as you can see we have a really clean saturated look and let's go across here and just sharpen it just a little bit now we have a sharper and more saturated beanie let's move on to the next power window so if you'd like to learn more about tracking with power windows i previously made a video about it so link below for that and then it'll help you with any movement in camera or any object moving through camera but today we're just going to look at how to use power windows we're not going to go through tracking now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the line tool so the line tool is something i rarely ever use but we'll see if we can use it in this situation let's just do it around this area here and see if we can change the color green on this plant here so build a little box and you can add more points to it simply by just clicking the line and this will help you get a much cleaner selection so so something like that's fine and let's go to hue versus saturation and clicking the green area let's bring it right out and let's make our green a little stranger than it was so let's make it something like that so before and afterwards and as you can see we're only affecting this area we're not affecting this area at all so that's very handy so that works really well so let's go to our next one and this is the pen tool and this is the one so we'll name that pen tool so this is the one that I would use more than any other one and for this one what we can do is let's say let's create a little bit of light coming from the top right and let's soften it right out and soften it right in we want it to be really faint in fact let's bring it right up and even more softness and just add another point if you want to add another point with this area you need to create another point here so again another point so let's go to our curves and let's go back to the first dot so make sure your white is only selected and just bring it up ever so slightly we've gone a bit too far but that's fine we can easily just come back and bring that down a little bit so let's bring those blacks down a little bit and probably gone a little bit too far to the line that's fine so this is our image before and this is our image afterwards so it looks like there's a little bit of light coming from the top here and you can always finesse that go back to your power window maybe you want to bring it right in a little bit more and really soften it out the softer the power window the more natural it will look so from here to here very simple so for our last one this is the gradient power window so naming that gradient and this one here just makes a gradient so whatever way the arrow is facing that's the way your gradient is facing so if you want to see what your selection is you can either press shift h it will bring up your selection again if you don't want to use shortcut keys come up to view highlight highlight and that will show you it but again i would recommend using the shortcut keys the longer the arrow the softer the gradient so we're going to go quite soft say about there so with this gradient here let's darken this area and then keep this area bright let's just bring our gamma down and our gain down and bring this forward a little bit more we've gone from this image here to this image here so it starts off dark and gradually gets lighter and of course you can always just turn this gradient around and it works in reverse so darker to lighter 
But since our source of light is coming from this area, then let's just make it a bit like that. So there's actually one more power window that we can use, and that's an outside node. So let's go back to our circle, and then Alt-O for an outside node. And an outside node is everything that is not selected in this area here. Let's go back to our outside node, double clicking, and let's take all the saturation out. As you can see, anything that's outside this node is desaturated, but because we're working in parallel nodes, parallel nodes aren't affected by other parallel nodes. So if we wanted this effect, what we do, come down here, turn this node off, and turn that node off, and turn that node off. So now you have this image here all by itself. And of course, you can always put on other nodes that you want. So you want the gradient back on, just chuck the gradient back on. And maybe you like to look at the plant, come to your plant node and click that back on. Or maybe you just want the pen tool on. So that's a few different ways on how to use power windows. Um, if you don't want the outside one, you can just turn that off or simply just delete it. And we should fix this area up here. So let's make another parallel node. So Alt P. So let's use the pen tool, because that is the best one. Let's make a simple mask around it. Let's bring it right in. Let's bring some of that brightness down a little bit. And we need to soften that right out. So, and let's take some saturation out and maybe just blur it out just a little bit and even push it towards a more neutral color. I think that's a little too blurry, so let's bring it back a little bit more. Even more of a neutral color. And try to get some of that orange out. And there you have it. So, that was beforehand, and then that's afterwards. That really makes the eye go over here, not here. But as you can see, we're a little bit iffy here. So again, just bring it out and just softening it right out just to help with the overall look of your image. So maybe it's a little too blue around here. So just bring it back just a little bit. There you go. So that's looking a lot better. And of course, we can make targeted selections with this one. So let's go back to our hue versus saturation, find the area we want to desaturate, and then just bring it down a little bit. And then that way, it's making it look a lot better. So that's a few little things you can do using Power Windows. So we've gone from this image here to this image here.